I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll learn basics about rates of change. Now let me begin with uh, Newton's apple, right? He discovered that these apples, they always fall, right? That this is my apple. Let's say this is Newton's apple which just fell. And uh, Galileo on the other hand discovered a formula which could tell us the height of the apple at any instance of time. And these great scientists, they worked out that uh, the force of gravity, G, is 9.8 meters per second square. And this is kind of an acceleration, which uh, helps these things fall at a constant rate, right? So that is the constant rate at which, at which these objects fall. And, uh, you know, using the value of G as 9.8 meters per second square, we can actually approximate height of such objects when they fall freely from anywhere at any instance of time. Uh, let us imagine that this apple of ours fall from a tall building. And as you know, I'm Anil Kumar and I love to work with very simple values. What I will do here is I'll utilize their formula but uh, simplify it a bit for easy calculations. So let us think that uh, this apple is falling and it falls from a height of uh, approximately, let us say this height is for us uh, 45 meters, right? So it's a tall building of 45 meters high and from the roof garden, let's say this is the roof garden uh, and this apple kind of falls from there. Now we have to figure out what is the rate of change of height with time of this particular apple. Now for that, the formula which gave, uh, which can help us to give that rate of change could be that the height will say the distance from the top will be with respect to time equals to um, half of less 45 is the initial height. So initially it is 45 meters then it decreases since it falls, right? And the rate at which it decreases depends on this gravity value and it is half of this value which is uh, 9.8 meters per second square times uh, t square, right? So it becomes meters. So we have all these things now units lined up. So that's a perfect formula. If I divide 9.8 by 2, I get 4.9 but as you know, I am really love to work with simpler numbers. So what I will do is I'll round this. So instead of 4.9 I'll write minus 5t square. Think as if I have rounded my equation to one whole number instead of a decimal place. So we can kind of get an equation as 45 minus 5t square to work with, right? So we'll go further with this equation later but first let's find the rate of change of height, which is kind of a primary problem for us to figure out. So what is the rate at which this distance from top is changing? This is what we want to figure out. So we want to find a rate of change of distance, let's say S, uh, from top of the building, right? From uh, top of the building with respect to time, right? So this is with respect to time. That is what we want. So, so basically, we want to calculate what is delta s over delta t at any instance of time. That means uh, where the change in time is very, very small, right? So that is what we are really interested in. So that rate of change, you know, could be found using this formula, uh, using the limit concept. So we know limit h approaches 0, where we could write this as s of t plus h minus s of t over h. So that could give us the rate of change of height with respect to time at any instance of time, right? So when we want instantaneous, we want that change to be very, very small. So I have taken a time which is h away and h is approaching 0. So that gives very, very small 
difference in time by which we are dividing. So we'll get kind of instantaneous rate of change of height with respect to time with this calculation, right? So this could be calculated as a limit h approaches 0. And in this formula, I'll substitute t plus h. So we get 45 minus 5. I'm using the simplified version of uh, our formula t plus h whole square. So that is st plus h minus st. So let me put it in bracket, which is 45 minus 5t square. Correct? Everything divided by h. Now let's expand and simplify it. So we get limit h approaches 0. And when we expand this, we get 45 minus 5 times t square plus 2th plus h square. And here we get minus 45 plus 5t square over h. Now 45 minus 45 is 0 and minus 5t square plus 5t square is also 0. So what we are left with is limit h approaches 0 minus 5 times. So t square, let me cancel it here so that becomes very apparent, right? That's this cancels with this, correct? When I multiply with minus 5, it becomes minus 5t square and that is plus 5t square. So we are left with 5 to th plus h square divided by h. Now I can factor, I mean h square is within the bracket. I can take h out, so I get minus, I mean, okay, let me write here itself. Limit h approaches 0, minus 5h, I get 2t plus h over h. And now we can cancel these two, and what do we get? And we can substitute h equals to 0 now. So if I substitute 0 here for h, I get minus 10t. So rate of change of height or the distance from the top is minus 10t. Now minus indicates that it is decreasing, correct? So, so the distance is increasing. I mean, it's, it's not distance from the top, it is distance from the base, right? So s is the distance from from the ground, correct? So distance from the ground is decreasing at any instance of time since the object apple here is falling. So we get a very general formula. We can say that that the rate of change uh, at any instance uh, t is equals to minus 10 t. So that is our formula. Now if the question is, find the rate of change of the height of this apple at time t equals to 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, 4 second, then you can just substitute those values here and find your answer, right? So that is so simple as that. But at times, it may you may get a wrong answer. Now, what is the possibility of getting wrong answer? We need to figure out what is the domain of t. Because since this apple has a limited ground to cover, as soon as it falls, uh, you know, the equation is no more valid. So we need to figure out what is the domain that is at what time will the height be zero. Okay, so, so we had this formula S of t. Now we'll try to figure out when will the height be zero or what is the time apple takes to fall on the ground. So for that, we'll say zero equals to 45 minus 5t squared. Solve this equation. So we have 5t squared equals to 45. And then we have t squared equals to 45 over 5 equals to 9. And t is equals to square root of 9. We have to take the positive value, 3 seconds. Do you see that? So my 45 was a good number to start with. We got a whole number, 3 seconds. So remember when you're doing rates of change, and especially if you're working with word problems like what we have at present, you should always work out the domain. So let me write down here that the domain for us is uh, that t belongs to real numbers, where t is between uh, 0 and 3 seconds, correct? So if my question is, find the rate of change of height of this object, which is apple, at t equals to, now my question, let me write down the question, is find 
rate of change at t equals to uh, let's say 0 1 2 3 and 4 seconds then I know you got this special formula right so you could once you get a general formula that's a generic solution you can always substitute t equals to 0 1 2 3 and 4 and get the answer but remember your domain is from 0 to 3 so your answer should be that your rate of change so I'll say instantaneous rate of change uh, of the height of the height so that the delta s over delta t is at 0 if I put 0 here I get 0 as my answer right so so at t equals to 0 it is 0 and at 1 if I put 1 here I get minus 10 Do you see that if I put 2 there then I get minus 20 if I put 3 I get minus 30 but for 4 seconds what should my answer be so for 4 seconds which should say does not exist right so because the equation is not valid it is out of domain so you need to take care of such things and of course uh, the units will be uh, meters so we'll write meters per second as the units right so what I want to warn here as we move forward is that uh, whenever you start with an application question try to find when is this equation valid what is the right domain and then work it out right and if you have a question where you need to find rate of change at more than one place more than one value in that case a generic solution this is your general solution right is helpful since you can substitute a value at the end and find rate of change at so many different uh, time intervals right so that is how you should be working with such examples as you can see from the example that the rate of change every second increases so as the apple approaches the ground rate of change is velocity right this basically is velocity right velocity starts with zero so starting is free fall at right so whenever free fall so velocity starts with zero meters per second and kind of ends with uh, 30 let me write 30 minus meters per second minus because it is going downwards right so that direction gives it a minus value but that is the maximum velocity with which the object hits the ground so at times I can ask you a question find the velocity with which the object hits the ground in that case you know now how to do it you need to first find the time when it hits the ground that is three seconds in this particular case and then find rate of change at that time so that could be a variation to this question and at times a thinking problem for you I hope with this video we have covered a lot and this is going to form a good base as we move along for you to understand rates of change and solve such questions. Thank you and all the best.